From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome to a Cube Conversation. I'm coming to you from our Boston area studio. We've been digging into Pensando and the technology that they've been doing. Happy to welcome to the program Steve Hershkowitz. He is the Vice President of Worldwide Sales with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, part of the HPC, HPE Pensando uh, relationship. Uh, Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Stu. Uh, really happy to be here. So, you know, obviously, you know, Pensando made a bit of a splash when they came out at the end of 2019. We were really excited to have the Cube at the launch, had some big name guests there, including your CEO, Antonio Neri. Uh, you know, HPE has an investment and is an OEM of Pensando. Uh, so, you know, pr bring us in as to, you know, why this partnership, why this investment uh, from HPE's standpoint? Well, thanks, Stu. So, so obviously, there are a lot of reasons why uh, HPE would be interested in a partnership with an innovative company like Pensando, standing the fact that you have the you know the MPLS team uh, that had developed you know industry changing technologies, um, you know uh, for, for their previous company at Cisco, uh, and leveraging their expertise and their market leadership to bring new innovation to the market, which was very interesting to us, uh, as, as well as um, the partnership that was launched between uh, Pensando's chairman uh, John Chambers and our CEO Antonio Neri. Um, and when you hear them speak, they talk about you know being being partners for life. And so I think what's unique and what's interesting to us is you know you'll hear hear our CEO Antonio talk a lot about. HP's evolution as a company and how we we are absolutely the um, edge to cloud platform as a service company. And when you have a strategy that involves service and consumption, um, you have to follow the innovation engine and the market transitions uh, to be, you know, to, to be able to satisfy your customers and get out in front of some of the market trends. And so the technology and the innovation that Pensando um, brings to the to the market um, is unlike anything else that's available today that anybody else can do. And we saw this as a great opportunity for us um, to really serve our customers as they move um, more of their data to the edge and want to apply and distribute a lot of the services to the edge where the data is created and, of course, where most of the data is consumed. So it's an exciting partnership for us. We also have a board seat um, uh, in the company, and we're very, very excited um, about the opportunity, and our customers are really, uh, really excited as well about the partnership. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Those of us that have you know watched the industry long enough, you know, I remember back, you know, John Chambers for many years, HP was one of Cisco's biggest partners uh, for for a long time. Uh, you know, it's really interesting what you're talking about. You know, some of the new opportunities, what's going on with Edge. Uh, bring us inside the partnership a little bit. How has it been going? You've got you know about six months uh, since it's un unveiled to the world. Uh, what, what what can you tell us so far uh, now that it's seen the light of day? Well, so the partnership is is very, very strong. And I think if you ask some of the senior executives on the Pensando side, um, including some of the board members, they would tell you that the partnership um, with HPE is different than any other relationship that they have uh, with any any other company. And um, and it's, it is that way because we've created a very unique bond through our global business unit that's responsible for bringing these uh, uh, products to market and defining the roadmap to a very, very unique go-to-market strategy that we've developed where we actually have uh, myself leading a go-to-market um, uh, engine of people that are helping with the enablement, with the training, with the customer interactions, qualifying opportunities, and really helping to make a market um, for this technology as we do have you know, first mover advantage. So we work very closely with all aspects of the Pensando team. Our business units are aligned. Our development teams are aligned. Our sales uh, teams are very, very closely aligned. Uh, their chief revenue officer, Frank Palomo, and I are tied at the hip as we bring this technology to market um, together with both of our sales teams. And then as we look at um, further innovating together, uh, you know, we, we are completely locked and aligned on the uh, on the combined roadmap. So it's a unique, a unique partnership. It creates unprecedented opportunity for HPE um, through this partnership to gain architectural control um, and help our customers gain architectural control over these next generation data center networks and really make a leapfrog over any of the technologies that are available today. Um, and, 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 you know, really two focuses, right? One is in helping the cloud service providers that want to better compete with the uh, with the 800 pound gorillas uh, with a much better technology, a uh, faster technology and a technology that leapfrogs anything that they've built. And the other side of that is our ability to help enterprises as we uh, sell more as a service offerings and more edge solutions, help our enterprises make their environments much less complex, 
much more secure and really help them improve you know, business application performance so that they can sustain competitive advantage and make their, their data center networks look a lot more like what the hyperscalers have built, but only a lot better and a lot faster and a lot more secure. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, Steve, one of the things that I, I've always been uh, really admired about HP over the years is, you know, baking these solutions together. It's not just a bunch of pieces, get them at the customer site and, and figure it out. But, you know, both, uh, you know, I worked on standards. I, I've worked on a lot of solutions over the years and uh, HP and now HPE always make sure when it gets to the customer, you know, it's together, it works. Uh, the, the, the time from uh, getting it, uh, being able to use it, uh, you know, really is minimized. And uh, that, that focus on simplicity is something that, you know, I, I've seen time and again from H, HPE. Um, when it comes to the, the Pensando solution, how does this fit in with the, the HPE products? You know, where does it fit in? What do those solutions look like uh, today? It's a really, really good question, Stu. So um, initially, we're going to market on our um, our ProLiant rack server platform, and, and, and we will launch in June uh, general availability of these solutions. We've been offering them to customers, very select number of customers, through a private um, SKU that we've created. Um, but, but it fits initially um, within our rack server portfolio. But over time, you'll see us start to begin to integrate this, you know, across the entire compute portfolio where it makes sense and where there's a, a market and where customers are asking for it, in addition uh, to some integration points, um, you know, with different business units, right? So we have this, this uh, relationship is so exciting that almost every business unit within HPE is interested in figuring out what the leverage points are to help solve customer problems and create opportunities for customers. So everything from our blade servers through Synergy, through our Aruba relationship, through our software uh, stack, um, you know, we're going to be doing a lot, uh, a lot more integration. So I think you look out for initially an opportunity to install this digital services platform where you have a lot of rack servers and you want to reduce the complexity and really distribute a lot of those network services that are provided today in a centralized fashion through a number of different black boxes with a number of different operating systems, a number of different service contracts move those to the compute edge at the exhaust of an HPE server on a platform that's factory integrated and that we stand behind and we support and sell. And you made another comment about support and how HPE does a really good job at making sure that when we sell a solution, it's a tightly integrated solution that scales, that works together uh, and that customers can count on and versus something that's, you know, loosely coupled and disjointed as you see a lot of partnerships, which, uh, you know, which we, we, we try and avoid. So uh, one of the parts of this relationship that's unique is that HPE is actually going to be supporting and providing the lay, the L1 and the L2 support um, for this product on a global basis. So when, when our customers have an issue or they need help, they come to us and it really rounds out the relationship. So it's not just you know, taking a, a, a portfolio or a solution and putting it into an HPE server. It's a factory integrated, factory tested solution with a, a lot of different integrations that we stand behind, that we sell, and it scales. It'll work just as well with, um, you know, 100 DSPs and servers as it will with, you know, 100,000. Uh, I, I'd love to drill in a little bit on uh, really the, the customer use cases there. When you talk about edge computing, first of all, there's a lot of misnomers out in the industry. You know, edge can be anything from the telco edge. I've seen lots of things like network function virtualization. I, I've, I've talked to HPE about uh, those network uh, offerings in the past through down to kind of IoT devices and everything in between. Uh, you sure. said you've got some customers that have been getting early access. Are there any patterns or anything you can tell us about, you know, what are those, you know, edge use cases uh, that, that this solution uh, is, is a good fit for? Sure, Stu. I think, um, you know, when we, when we started this journey six months ago, we initially thought that the most common use case that customers would be interested, especially the large New York financial customers or the large financial customers in general, was, um, would be security. Right. And so we we had a lot of conversations about things like East West Firewall, uh, you know, 70, 80 percent of the traffic, as we talk to customers nowadays, um, is East West. Right. It's application to application traffic where it used to be north south. And that that East West traffic, especially in a virtualized world with virtualized networks and virtualized servers, has created a lot of complexity um, for customers. So we thought originally security, micro segmentation, East West firewall encryption would be the use cases. But interestingly enough, as we started to talk to customers, what we found out pretty quickly was that many of these customers have lost track because of the sprawl 
in the uh, in the growth of the data in their data centers, have really lost track of which applications are talking to which applications, which people are talking to which people. And in fact, we had some customers tell us that if we were to put your system in and turn on firewall services from day one, we could potentially you know, bring our network to its knees because we've lost track of where everything is going. So, so, so what that's led, led itself to is a lot of customers that very interested in the first use case, which is around visibility, observability, and telemetry, giving our customers the ability to really graph out and see their application patterns because what you can't see um, you really can't secure. And then and then what we believe will happen over time, and we're starting to see this play out, is that those customers, once they have a handle on what their uh, traffic flows are, um, you know, and they have some good telemetry, they have, uh, you know, some good um, uh, services on being able to get that visibility, then they'll start to d- define security policy based upon those traffic patterns and use the centralized um, Pinsando policy services manager to distribute that policy, whether it be micro segmentation for for managing and securing um, virtualized traffic or east-west firewall, um, and then later on encryption in, in a future release. Um, so that's what we're seeing. Excellent. Like, oh, great customer data already. Uh, you know, th- what you've been saying, you know, really resonates. Uh, you know, customers today know that, that that pace of change and keeping track of things is, is really challenging. It's gone from something that people might be able to get a handle to with to knowing I have to have, you know, the automation, the systems, uh, the intelligence baked into the system to be able to handle it. All right, so June, you know, this month, uh, you've GA'd the product. Congratulations on getting that. So tell us what, what you expect to see, uh, the Bintondo HP relationship. Are there, you know, expansions in the product line we should be looking forward through the rest of 2020 or any other pieces uh, as you look forward? Sure. So, so we are excited about, about the June um, launch. Uh, we're also excited about the fact that we have our, our, our large customer show coming up this year, HP Discover, and we're going to be profiling, um, you know, the, the new Pinsando partnership at Discover, and giving customers, um, you know, the ability to see the power of this technology and how it can really help them solve their most pressing business and technical um, priorities. But we have a full roadmap that we've built out um, jointly uh, with our partners at Pinsado that involves taking this platform um, across different parts of our portfolio. One of the things that we'll be doing as we launch almost immediately is we're going to be putting this on um, our flagship GreenLake offer, right, which is our as-a-service offering. And so customers will have the ability to, to, to purchase Pinsando solutions um, under GreenLake. And then you know, over time, we'll enhance that to provide you know, the detailed metering that our customers have con- you know, come to know um, you know, through that, that platform. So I think you'll see a big splash there. And then there's a lot of work being done uh, to leverage the SDKs that Pinsando was providing to provide better integration into some of our workflows and some of our tools. And again, as I mentioned to you earlier, Stu, almost every business unit in our company um, has got you know, meetings going on with Pinsado, trying to figure out how they can leverage the power of this technology um, to help HPE, um, you know, gain, you know, gain and sustain long-term competitive advantage as customers move from these old legacy, you know, three-tier networks that are, are very complicated to run, and they have to stitch VLANs together. They have to go through different service chaining to get simple things done. I think there's going to be a lot of work going on across all of our business units to uh, to keep you know Pensando front and center and help us deliver this platform jointly so that we're differentiated. One other thing I think is important, Stu, is that we're also building a whole host of differentiated services around this platform. So things like professional services, training services, security assessment services, right? We're gonna we're gaining a lot of experience through the trial and proof of concept process that we're going through right now. And we're building runbooks, right, to be able to sort of document exactly what we've learned as we do these big implementations and these trials and be able to bring those to our customers in the form of services that they can use as they look to migrate and modernize these legacy uh, networks. Excellent. Well, Steve, you know, sounds like, you know, just the, the GA is step one. You and your team have your hands full with a lot uh, of, of pieces as you go to market with this and expand that offering. Really impressive uh, where, where you're taking this. I uh, want to give you the final word, uh, Pensando, HPE, and, uh, you know, what, what customers should be looking for. 
So do I think our customers should look forward to the GA launch coming out, you know, towards the end of June? And, um, and this technology is very exciting because if I had to sum it up in, in, in basically three statements, it would be this solution combined with what HPE has the ability to deliver and support will absolutely help our customers um, simplify their environments, reduce a lot of operational complexity, thereby reducing significant cost as they look to re-architect and build their next generation data center networks. Secondarily, this solution, our combined solution together, will help every customer, especially those in the financial industry or highly regulated industries, really substantially improve their security posture and reduce the amount of risk that they have in their environments. And then lastly, and I think almost as uh, equally as important, is the fact that this solution, because it's built on a highly programmable, customized ASIC that's traditionally used in networking technology, not necessarily seen at the exhaust of a server, is going to give our customers uh, the ability to, to, to exponentially improve their application performance so that when business applications run faster, it gives them opportunities to get to market faster with their own products and drive additional revenue uh, to stay, you know, sustain long-term competitive advantage. So we're excited about the opportunity, Stu. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, Steve Hershkowitz, thank you so much for the update. Congratulations on the launch, and absolutely, we'll be keeping track of the progress. Thank you for your time. Happy to be here. All right. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching The Cube.